it says upon the revelation of Jesus as the Christ the church will be built and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. so the litmus test that the church is built according to pattern according to prescription is that the gate of hell shall not prevail now that word gates as it is used in the Bible has a wide spectrum of meanings even though all the meanings are related are you there yes. but in the context of the scripture that we read gates there refer to authorities do you still remember when the Bible says lift up your heads O ye gates and be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors do you realize that there was a feedback when the, that decree went forth there were authorities that challenged that decree oh you're not following me I'm still trying to lay the foundation of our discussion. Jesus is saying that the authorities of hell will be seeking to prevail against the church. And the only reason why that will not happen is that the church is built according to pattern. Stay with, stay with me. However, you are not seeing it from the other side. Let me show you the other side of the coin. If the gate of hell prevails against the church, which is as a result of the fact that we are no longer building according to the specification of the foundation. Then the church becomes the synagogue of Satan. Now, my context is the church on the continent of Africa. So it's not all of our gatherings that, it, that is part of what God is building. <laughs> Welcome to Remnant Apostolic TV. Yeah, you'll be getting powerful messages that will change and transform your life. Thank you. So, the church is supposed to be that measuring instrument, the plumb line for society, the plumb line for nations. But if the instrument becomes faulty, all the measurements is going to spew out are wrong. And that wrong reference is going to affect society. If you're a student of the Bible, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, reveals that um, the society is a mirror image of the church. Because when God wanted to solve the situation of abominations in the land, what he did was that he visited his prophet and took him by the locks. And in the spirit, he brought him into the temple. That the, the source of the problems you see in your city, in your nation, it comes from the temple. When he got into the temple in the spirit, he now saw the elders of the people worshipping the sun God. He also saw women praying to Thomas, the fertility goddess, to make them productive. So the abomination that invaded the society was traceable to the church. So in order for us to correct the wrong measurements that came from a faulty instrument, we need to recalibrate. So what we want to do tonight is clinical. It's called apostolic recalibration. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew chapter 16 as we begin a journey. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, his disciples, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist and some Elias and others Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. We want to do recalibration. It's very technical. It's like a surgery. So stay with me as we build. Before this presentation that I just read to us, Jesus was in the west and Jesus traveled all the way to the east and he was mute. He was mute because he was pregnant with a revelation. 
but he needed a trigger before he could divulge what his heart was pregnant with. So when they came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus now began to administer a questionnaire. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? This is the Jesus that was not concerned about what people felt about him, what people said about him. He was never concerned about that because he found his security in God and he did not need any form of endorsement uh, to add to the sense of his being. Now, this same Jesus, when he came to Caesarea Philippi, he began to administer a strange questionnaire. The first question we need to ask is, what was the prompting? What moved Jesus to administer such a questionnaire? Uh, the question I asked is what I want to answer now. Why did he feel pressured? to administer such a question here. So, the answer to my question is not in the Bible. So I went to God and asked, hey, what's happening here? And the Lord now spoke to me and said, early that morning when Jesus came to my presence in prayer, I revealed to him that I have disclosed his identity to somebody. So Jesus now said, don't worry, I'll find the person. Left the place of prayer and came and now administered the question here. Are you following? <laughs> when the results of, the, of his questionnaire came, he saw that the person he was looking for was not outside. So he rephrased the sample space of his administration to include the disciples. Who do ye say that I am? Because he was looking for a trigger. If nobody knows his identity, he cannot talk about the thing that he was pregnant with. And Peter now said, Thou art the Christ. Uh, that first aspect of Peter's delivery referred to his ministry, referred to his office, the office that had been carved out for him in the spirit, from whence he will administer everything that is part and parcel of the new creation. Are you there? So thou art the Christ, referring to his ministry. Thou art the son of the living God, referring to his person. That was the duality of revelation that came in the witness that Peter bore. And should I tell you something? If you come into any territory and you cannot hear anyone speak by inspiration and say, thou art, then the church is not in that land. Because it was after Peter gave that revelation that he came, he, he now, the trigger for him to reveal what was in his heart was now pressed. Now that you know that I am the Christ, I also want you to know that I'm into building and construction, just like Peter, uh, uh, um, Philippe, the tetrarch of Caesarea. Philip is building Caesarea, but I'm into construction. I'm building a spiritual edifice called the church. And this church that I'm building is not just that I'm building it. I own it. Uh, it is my church. And I'm the civil engineer that will build it. And in the building of the church, the foundation upon which that building will be based is this revelation that you picked not from flesh and blood because there are some revelations you can get by research <laughs> you can stumble on some insights because you you googled he said it's not an a cerebral adventure that led to this insight. It was a disclosure from my father who is in heaven because my father is the only chatter personality that can reveal me. You, you have had dealings with heaven. Because you have had dealings with heaven, I say unto you, you will no longer be called Simon. You are now called Peter. Now stay with me. Peter means a stone or a pebble. Those smooth stones that you find by the seashore. Simon means a weed that you find by the seashore. A weed without a stem. And so when the waves of the sea blow on it, it will, it will go in the direction of the waves. That means it was a man without conviction. Anything that comes to you. But I want to transform you from Simon. Your place in this building that I'm constructing is Peter Stone. So it will now interest you to know that it was now Peter. In the book of First Peter chapter 2 beginning from verse 5 that revealed that we are actually lively stones. And we are built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
that we may offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God, acceptable through Jesus Christ. It was because of those dealings he was able to get that insight. Are you still with me? It means that when Peter got the revelation of Jesus, he qualified to have a revelation about himself. Because you are dead and your life is hid in Christ and Christ in God. It's only a revelation of Jesus that can unveil your essence. For the Bible says, in him does all things consist. You don't have a meaning other than the meaning that is sustained upon his heart. So the moment he had a disclosure of the Christ, he also had a disclosure of who he was in him. So Jesus said, upon this revelation, and the revelation he was talking about is the revelation of Jesus as the Christ, the revelation of Jesus as the Son of the living God. Are you there? Oh. I said, are you there? Yeah. I know you are not there, but... <laughs> so just like I said, Jesus as the Christ is referring to his office. And um, how many of you realize that even grace is managed by a throne, an office? That's the office of the Christ. He manages grace. That's why the Bible says that we should come boldly onto the, the throne. Of, okay, you see. It's an allocation that comes from an office that is pedestaled in the heavens. I don't have time to tell you more about that office, but in the topography of heaven, the office is, is situated in the highest point in heaven. And the reason why it is situated at that point, are you still with me? Yes. Is so that it is God's will in his eternal purpose for Christ to fill all things. In the new creation, the substance of that new creation is Christ. Yes, that is the only approved reality that drives the new creation. I don't have time to, to talk about the office and how Satan has labored so much to obscure our understanding of that office. But it will interest you to know it is, it, that it's in the context of the government of that office that the believer is placed so that the office can manipulate you according to the counsel of God's will. If deception ever comes, are you there? The purpose of deception in the body of Christ is to isolate you, is to obscure the office so that you begin to reason yourself apart from him. So, he says, upon the revelation of me as the Christ and me as the son of the living God, this my spiritual building will be built. Stay there. What's the significance of Jesus' person? The Bible speaking in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his son. There's a difference between the law of God and the precept of God and the, the ordinances of God and the testimony of God. When we are dealing with the testimony of God, what we are dealing with is what God said about himself by himself. That's the testimony of God. Are you there? He says, upon the revelation of Jesus as the Christ, the church will be built, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the litmus test that the church is built according to pattern, according to prescription, is that the gate of hell shall not prevail. Now that word gate, as it is used in the Bible, has a wide spectrum of meanings, even though all the meanings are related. Are you there? But in the context of the scripture that we read, gates there refer to authorities. Do you still remember when the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be thou lifted up the everlasting doors. Do you realize that there was a feedback when the, that decree went forth? There were authorities that challenged that decree. Oh, you're not following me. I'm still trying to lay the foundation of our discussion. Jesus is saying that the authorities of hell will be seeking to prevail against the church. 
And the only reason why that will not happen is that the church is built according to pattern. Stay with, stay with me. However, you are not seeing it from the other side. Let me show you the other side of the coin. If the gate of hell prevails against the church, which is as a result of the fact that we are no longer building according to the specification of the foundation, then the church becomes the synagogue of Satan. Now, my context is the church on the continent of Africa. So it's not all of our gatherings that, it, that is part of what God is building. <laughs> so we are trying to do recalibration. You are the one that, you are the one that came up with recalibration. <laughs> the prophet downloaded the emphasis. So the apostle needs to come and build according to the emphasis. I was in Nigeria when I saw apostolic recalibration. I said, Jesus. It had been downloaded. Nothing can be done about it. So I had to go into wisdom to come out with building materials that can build the protocol of recalibration. We are going to use new eyes and new lenses to investigate so that we'll be able to differentiate between the church of Jesus and the synagogue of Satan. I, are you there? I have traveled extensively on the continent of Africa and I have met, I have seen high places. <laughs> Bible students know what I'm talking about. High places built to spirits and deities. Like Asteroid. The altar of Balim. They are still very present with us today. And I can give you five characteristics of the manifestation of the altar of Balim. So we're going to put on spectacles so that we can <laughs> we can do some analysis. And just in case you're a pastor here, as we proceed in this presentation, please check what you're building. Because Jesus has turned his face on the continent of Africa and he has sworn that he will fill the gap of, his, of missionary manpower from the continent of Africa. He has sworn. It is sealed. Now that we are sure of this, uh, we need to know the implication of that for every minister of the gospel. And that is the reason why we need to recalibrate quickly. I'm going to show you one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six, seven. Seven, seven parameters of judging. Either we are dealing with church or synagogue. Meanwhile, the synagogue of Satan, what it means is the congregation of Satan. The government under that house is Satan. Now, you are not with me. You know. I don't have time to take you to the book of Revelation to show you the x-ray results that came from the churches, the seven churches of Asia. When the x-ray of the efficient church was printed out, love was highlighted. Are you there? When the x-ray of the church in Sardis, give me a moment, let me turn my Bible. When the x-ray of the church in Smyrna was printed out, John, the aspect of Christ that he revealed to that church is Jesus the immortal. Let me read to you. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, this thing saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive, immortality. That means I am the cure for death. If you throw death at me, death will die. That was a revelation of Christ that he brought to the church in Smyrna. Mm. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. But I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but what are they? Synagogue of Satan. That's the x ray. I came up. So there are some guys that gathered. Hmm? They had a congregation. 
They even claim to be a pure breed. Of the spiritual Jew. But when the x-ray result came out, <laughs> the identity was what? The congregation of Satan. So let me just stop there. If we go on studying the x-rays, we get to the church in Sardis. Oh, I did not explain to you why Jesus revealed himself to the church in Smyrna as the immortal. That was a prescription. That was the aspect of Christ that was supposed to solve, cure their ailment. Oh my God. Because according to Apostle Paul, God will solve the problems of the church. The church corporate or the church, uh, huh? the corporate church or the individual member of the church. He solves our problems only one way. It's Apostle Paul that said that. By revealing more of Christ to you. So the prescription that the Spirit of God gives for every situation in church life and every situation in your own individual life to, to discomfit the enemy is a revelation of Christ, an aspect of his walking. Oh, you're not following me. I don't want to digress. 